is. So if somebody misses the, the call, they can uh, see it. Uh, they can see the recording of it. So uh, welcome. This is our uh, introduction to the Empathy Circle facilitation training. We, we do this call every uh, Friday. And we uh, let me give you a little bit of an overview of what we have planned for today. Going to do a little screen share here. Uh, OK, so uh, we're going to be uh, having this welcome. Going to start with starting off welcoming everyone. Uh, we'll have some participant introductions. We want to hear from each of you a little bit about you yourself. We'll talk about the training uh, and how to sign up for the training. We will go into uh, questions and answers. If you have any questions, we'll explain how to do the empathy circle and then do a short empathy circle and then have a full group debrief. And we go for more or less for about uh, two hours uh, for this session. So I'm Edwin Rutsch. I'm a director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. And for about the past 13 years or so, I've been working on the project of uh, building a more empathic culture and society and started this center. And uh, it's at the website cultureofempathy.com. And it's the largest website for empathy related material on the internet. And uh, we have all kinds of different empathy building projects that we do. Uh, we had, we have the uh, empathy tent where we, you know, would go out into public spaces, offer empathic listening and uh, conflict mediation. We uh, do like have hundreds of interviews with empathy experts from all over the world. I always point to the bookshelf behind me. Those are all books on empathy. And I've interviewed most of the authors. You can you know, check the website to, to see those interviews. And um, so the empathy circle is what we're going to be talking about today and, and how to take part in the training. And the empathy circle, I find, is the best you know, first step gateway practice for empathy building skills and for listening skills. And it's a very easy practice to kind of learn and, and get involved with. And I think you get the most benefits uh, for the least amount of work with learning this practice. And there's a lot of practices you can do for going into greater depth, uh, but we're just kind of focusing on this first step uh, gateway practice. So with that, um, what we want to do is just hear from everyone here, your your name, where you're located, and uh, just why you want to be an uh, empathy circle facilitator. And uh, I don't know if somebody, I don't know, Graham, would you be willing to call on people? So yeah, you can just go around. Yes, indeed. Um, so um, Edwin, do you feel that you have introduced yourself? Or? Yeah, name, I'm okay. Edwin Rutsch from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I want to be an empathy circle facilitator because I think everyone in the world should learn this practice and the world would be just a much better place uh, for humanity if everybody just kind of knows this simple practice. So that's my intro, thanks. Thank you. So likewise, for around about 30 seconds, please introduce yourself. So Dustin, can you go next? You I can't hear you, you're muted. Hi, I'm Dustin, I'm from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Right now, uh, I'm joining the Empathy Circle because Graham made me. No, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I joined. I joined because this is a this is a good practice. I was recommended to try it, and I, I gave it a good effort last time. And I was kind of surprised at how difficult it really is. And this is a this is a skill that I could really sharpen on. And that's uh, that's because I. It's just it, it applies to all forms of life. I, I, I find listening is a very important skill to learn. So I'm that's why I'm a part of this. And I want to be a facilitator for the exact same reason, teaching others how to do this. I like team building exercises. Yeah. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, and Kat, can you now speak, please? Yeah, sure. My name's Kat and I'm, I'm from Scotland and I've done the training um, once already. I'm repeating it at the moment. So I've started doing circles and I enjoy doing them for the soft skills training, being able to work on communication skills and also creating an environment for others to connect together and then um, practice empathy together and also about topics as well. There's so much to it. There's loads of benefits. So thanks very much. Thank you, Kat. And Kevin, over to you. Would you like to talk about yourself for a few seconds? Sure. Hey, guys from Melbourne, uh, probably the only Australian here. It's 3.05 in the oh. morning. So hello. I'm jealous that you guys have sunshine, but that's okay. 
Um, yeah, I kind of been doing empathy for a while. Like, uh, take mindfulness pretty seriously. Um, I got a mentor that got me into it. And um, obviously empathy kind of makes the world go around and without empathy, you don't have much. So I don't know, I'd like to be a facilitator on those basis. Uh, I don't know how hard it is to do the facilitator training, but you know, um, empathy is really important. It connects you. You can understand other people's pain without having to feel it. And that's really important for helping people. So cheers. Thank you, Kevin. And Yancy, would you like to speak? Sure. So good for me. It's good morning. I'm in Los Angeles, California. Um, the reason why I'm taking this course is one, like I shared with some of you earlier, is I'm trying to develop my uh, my role as a voice of the customer in a customer experience uh, department. Um, and also, I want to say about a month ago, I took the Strengths Finders test, and I've always thought that empathy was one of my biggest, uh, my uh, one of my largest strengths. But it actually wasn't. It can't. It didn't even make it to the top ten. So I really did want to leverage and and learn a little bit more uh, because, like like uh, some of you already stated, uh, empathy is something that's going to help us not only in our personal lives but also in our careers everywhere. Actually, thank you, Yancy. Uh, Anna, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, with pleasure. Hi, I'm sorry, I cannot switch on my um, camera on just yet because I'm still at work. I just have a short break at the moment. Hopefully soon I'll, I'll have um, my weekend. My name is Anna Poriba. I am from Germany and I'm a behavioral scientist. And empathy um, has a huge influence on my life especially since um, when I was a child and, and for all my life, I'm also around horses. And I've, I have this feeling that I learned a lot about empathy from them as well. And um, I was lucky enough to stumble upon Edwin's amazing website and his resources. And this is also why, why I'm here. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you, Anna. Welcome to our little group. Um, Alison. Would you like to introduce yourself? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Allison. Um, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I've been, I guess, in uh, therapy for about seven years. And empathy has kind of, like, helped me see my humanity and, you know, be okay with it. <laughs> um, and so I work in healthcare IT. And so as I'm kind of on this journey, I would like to, you know, bring more authenticity in the business world. And so I'm hoping to, you know, do some trainings um, in there and kind of it become more of the norm instead of, you know, hiding yourself when you're at work. Sounds good, Alison, thank you. And Bill, would you like to be next? Sure. Um, <clears throat> my name is Bill Filler. I'm in San Francisco Bay Area in uh, California in the U.S. I'm a retired uh, special education teacher and uh, I've been one of the co-designers of the training and uh, I've just been having a blast doing this and I feel that um, I'd like to leave a better world before I um, stop having fun being retired. So I'm going to try empathy. Thank you, Bill. And Julian. Can you go, can you speak, please? Yes, hello, everybody. Um, so um, I'm inclined to be friendly to anyone, to anyone with whom I've communicated offline when we didn't really use to communicate online and to anyone with whom I can communicate thanks to the teams who provide us with um, uh, programs, for instance, for public communication. Um, at the same time, um, I'm so very much interested in uh, data management uh, that you can discuss with me when you want uh, how one should start, for instance, I, I, I worded like this, it, it's not necessarily the only wording, wording that you know, I would recommend. So. <clears throat> Uh, we can discuss how best to start uh, managing data together with others and why 
um, uh, people uh, can forego introductions. Um, this is actually uh, uh, when somebody has to introduce oneself in a group call, this means that the software developer has not done their job. So that's all for now. Thank you, Julian. You've given us something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Rob McNeil, uh, London, Ontario, Canada, former Kiwi, New Zealander. Um, do a lot of animal rights uh, organizing for the last few years. Done some study of uh, nonviolent communication in BC. But what I've learned is that whether it's uh, external outreach or working with other people, empathy seems to be uh, the only future for uh, the planet. So I'd like to get better at it. I'd like to learn more about it and like to help others uh, learn more about empathic listening, empathy. Very happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Rob. Welcome. And Franny. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Franny. I'm from London in the UK and I'm living in Thailand at the moment. And a really central part of my experience as a human is my journey of understanding and integrating my developmental trauma. And I've found that self-empathy, self-compassion has been a huge part of that. And I also believe that invalidation and separation and these echo chambers are a huge issue for humanity at this point. And I'm really excited about what I might call social technologies like nonviolent communication and authentic relating for starting to bridge these gaps and have a clearer sense of ourselves and our boundaries and curiosity and presence for others. Thank you, Franny. And Anouk, can you introduce yourself, please? Sure. So my name is Anouk. I'm originally from France, but I'm in Edinburgh, Scotland at the moment. And I came last week to do a first um, cafe and I was really interested and I'd like to bring more uh, safer spaces around me and especially since I'm part of an organization called Extinction Rebellion and I also work in lots of schools um, I feel like having fussy dating skills uh, in empathy would be really useful. Thank you Anouk and uh, GEM could you introduce yourself please? Yes of course uh, I use the name Jem uh, uh, use they them pronouns uh, and uh, I uh, have forgotten how to be empathetic. And so I'm uh, excited for this refresher course. Thank you, Jim. Hello, Sabita, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Um, <clears throat> like most of you said, I, I want to work on empathy for myself and I want the goal for me for this year and going forward is to be a better human being and I think I really need to work on that and that's one of the reasons that I'm in this group today. Thank you, Sabita. And uh, to conclude, uh, uh, from me for a few seconds, um, I think about what Franny said and uh, uh, likewise, I have uh, developmental issues. I have a trauma background. And as a consequence, uh, I've never learned to communicate. And there's no empathy, no listening, and all that kind of thing. So uh, when I say there are none, uh, that's, uh, uh, <clears throat> that's not exactly right. But they've, they've come from nowhere. And they are improving. They have a long way to improve. And uh, my objective is not really to improve my circumstances, though that's essential and, uh, and very valuable. But uh, um, there must be, uh, let's say 40% of all the families in the world uh, will have some level of dysfunctionality. And I would like to be part of changing that scenario. It's a big dream, but hey, that's what brings me here. And so with that, uh, thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Ram. Did everyone get heard? Every do we? Maybe I just okay. I guess we got everyone. Um, so what we want to do next was give a little introduction to our empathy circle, uh, the training website, and 
I'm going to put the link into the chat here. Uh, I'm going to show, do a screen share of this. So you don't need to go there, but it's a, a good uh, site to uh, bookmark. And let me uh, just go through, explain uh, how to take part in the empathy circle training, how to sign up and kind of sort of some of the details. And so starting with the website. Uh, so if you go to the, the website here, um, it will soon, I'm working at it, getting uh, the domain name uh, empathycourse.com. You'll really just go to empathycourse.com. And if you forget, you can also go to empathycircle.com. Uh, and there's a link to this site uh, from there too, if you kind of, it's a kind of a inelegant uh, URL right now. So this is the uh, site, uh, all the material, you know, for our training is here. It's the uh, Empathy Circle Facilitator Training, Module 1, Introduction to the Empathy Circle. And this is just one of our previous cohorts. And we're just going to scroll down the page and just review some of the different steps here. Uh, that this is uh, Module 1 training. It's five sessions, two and a half hours uh, a week. And mm. yeah, was there question okay um we have this is an open source empathy training so what we're really trying to do here is make this uh, a uh, a training that anyone can use and that you can contribute to and help develop and help promote and that uh we're really trying to make it something that's like publicly available so that anyone in the world can use it because we're really trying to spread this uh, practice as widely as possible you know sometimes people create courses and it's their private pri proprietary, you know, course and nobody can use it, but we're really trying to create something almost like a Wikipedia, mm -hmm. which anyone can use and anyone can uh, contribute to and, uh, and spread. There's no cost to take part. Uh, the trainers are doing it uh, pretty much because they just believe in the, the mission of building a culture of empathy and want to spread the practice as widely as possible. Uh, you can uh, donate. Uh, Dustin, you'd asked about that. There's a link here to a Facebook uh, fundraiser page and as well as PayPal. So if you do want to contribute, that would be great. That kind of helps uh, the work. And uh, you can click through here to this start page. I should have preloaded that. But this uh, is a link to a, a Facebook event page, and there's uh, more information about these introductory cafes there. So if you click through, it'll take you to this link, and uh, you can see the upcoming cafes, the intro cafes that we're doing. So this is the sec, uh, what is it? Today's the ninth, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And we're doing them every Friday, and sometimes we have other dates that we do it too. And I had mentioned our empathy tent, and this is something that we do. We have, that's one of the trainers, uh, Lou, uh, and we have other trainers. And we're at UC Berkeley, at the University of California in Berkeley here in, this, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And we set up our empathy tent at the, at the, in, on the campus, you know, in the main plaza. We offer listening to people that come by. Of course, this is before COVID. And then we do trainings and we take this tent to uh, to uh, conflict situations like, you know, the political right comes to Berkeley and the left counter demonstrates and there's these knockdown drag out fights. We offer to listen to both sides and try to bring the sides together to uh, listen to each other using actually the empathy circle. So with the empathy circle is a great gateway practice uh, for conflict mediation. You know, you bring a conflict into an empathy circle. It's amazing how well it can do to help resolve the conflict. And there's all kinds of posts and other stuff here. Up, you know, like this video will be posted here too. So you can share it with your friends if you're on Facebook. Uh, to take part in the training, we have a prerequisite that you do take part in two empathy circles and taking part in, in this uh, uh, intro, Empathy Cafe Today counts as meeting one of the requirements. You can do it again or uh, do it with some friends. I know Kat and many others are uh, holding empathy circles and you, know, you can take one with them or you can just uh, take the instructions and uh, hold your own empathy circle with family friends. We just want to be sure that you have had some experience with the empathy circle before doing the facilitator training. Uh, there's a link here for the time commitment. So the training is uh, five sessions, two and a half hours uh, a week. 
And uh, you also, we ask that you will be connecting you with others. We have about 20 people usually in the cohort and we assign you each week to connect with another person in the cohort to do an empathy buddy call. You do half an hour of mutual empathic listening with each other, you know, just for mutual support. And so that adds another half hour a week. And then we ask that you try to hold an empathy circle, you know, during the week with family, friends, or, and that can add an hour or two as well, but it's not a requirement. And we're going to be adding some other, uh, you know, small tasks like, you know, writing up a little report on different things. So we'll be adding that too. And then there's the training and you just click through here on the site and it'll go into uh, details, you know, uh, about, uh, about uh, the, the different steps and the time commitment. And you can click through to this link for the training path. So what we mean by the training path, it's not like, hey, I just take this, you know, five week training and then, you know, I, I do the empathy circle. We really would like you to, you know, take the training a couple times and then become a trainee of it. Uh, you take that a couple times and then you actually become a trainer of the training. So we're training you to become uh, trainers of the practice. And, you know, that's going to take you, you know, taking the training maybe four, maybe five times and then you actually become a trainer of it. You can hold your own trainings and we're trying to support you and sort of spreading the practice. Like I said, if we want the whole world to do empathy circles, you know, we got a big job ahead of us. There's, you know, seven and a half billion people. So we're gonna need a lot of trainers to uh, sort of spread the, the practice. Um, so uh, then you can see for signing up, there's a different cohort series. So in the cohorts, you know, there's one five week cohort, then the next week, uh, next, we, then the next one starts after that, and the next one starts after that. So you can see on our, you can go through and check these different, we have uh, four cohorts in the works now that you can see which times work. and. You know, so there will be a cohort uh, for Australian time a bit better. So you won't have to be at three in the morning uh, for, you know, waking up. There's this one on, uh, and you can see it'll be 1 p.m. Australian Eastern time. So check the, you know, the cohort that, you know, the time frame that works for you. you just click through there and then all the steps for signing up uh, are there. We have one for uh, Saturdays. That's primarily for anyone can take part, but there's an organization, Pandemic Professors, we're trying to support them. There are college students who are doing mentoring for high school students. There's a bunch of uh, them taking part, and, but everyone's welcome. You, can, you can attend any cohort that you would like. Uh, we have one, somebody mentioned, Anouk, I think mentioned Extinction Rebellion. We also have one cohort on Mondays that's sort of optimized for Extinction Rebellion. So we're setting that one up now. That's the environmental group. So we're trying to spread the empathy circle practice within Extinction Rebellion. The, uh, we have some intro cafes every Monday you can come. So that'll be the 12th is the next one. And we'll be starting the cohort like as soon as we have 21 participants. I think we need another 10 right now before we start the training. Uh, then you can continue scrolling down. You'll see the, uh, the different modules. Each module, you can see more about the module, you know, what's involved in the training. So this is when you're doing the training, this is sort of your guide uh, for you know, for taking for each session, you can kind of see what to expect. There's a bunch of references, all the different things we cover in the training. You can have links to it. And then the empathy circle uh, kind of reference links, a bunch of uh, other websites we have like empathycircle.com, the culture of empathy, empathy tent. We have a you know, website there. And so that's kind of an overview uh, on the left here, you'll see the different cohorts. Um, you know, you can see kind of the past uh, cohorts we, that we have, all the different cohorts you can click through and the people who are here, we have all, yeah, a bunch of cohorts. And you can click through to uh, the sign up. There's an application. And so anyway, that's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of follow the, the steps there. 
so that is uh, so the basic intro is so we can kind of open it for any questions you might have about the training uh, before we go into doing an empathy circle. Just raise your hand if you have a question or comment. Yeah, Dustin. Is how long is it? The training. Yeah. Is five weeks, two and a half hours a week for five weeks so you do the five weeks but then you can take it again another five weeks and then another five weeks but the basic is and we ask that you commit to the five weeks like it's not really a drop-in is that we have a fixed number of people and each we divide into it's very experiential it's not like hey there's a bunch of theory and stuff it's like you get into it you actually do it you you practice it so it's a lot of practice and we divide into empathy circles and it's good if you're, you know, we need a fixed number of people. So we really ask that you commit to the, the times. So yeah, Kevin? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Extinction Rebellion. Do you have many people from them as part of the training? Um, I've, I've got a little bit of affiliation with them here in Melbourne. So if you need help, okay. um, yeah, happy to help. Oh, yeah, great. Um, yeah, in terms of Extinction Rebellion, we've done actually quite a bit with Extinction Rebellion. We've had empathy circles with some of the founders, you know, Roger Hallam, Rupert Reed, Shakina Rather, etc. cetera. Uh, they've taken part in empathy circles as well as we did two series. They, you know, Extinction Rebellion has 10 principles uh, that are core principles. We did two series of empathy cafes uh, where we went, uh, we would take one principle and then do a whole empathy cafe on that principle. So that's like 20, almost 30 empathy cafes we held. And then we've done a lot with Extinction Rebellion. So it's actually the empathy circles is spreading all throughout Extinction Rebellion. And definitely any connections you have would be great to you know send them our way because we're really trying to support Extinction Rebellion chapters to use this practice and it's really supportive, you know, for everyone being heard and seen and having a tool for conflict resolution. So there's always conflict in all these organizations. And the empathy circle is a really great practice for addressing a conflict. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Graham? Uh, can I just add to something that you talked yeah, about? Yeah, please. Any, any of the trainers, or, uh, trainees, please add any comments too. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was in a facilitator training session just this last Wednesday, two days ago, and uh, uh, our little breakout group had four people, and uh, we had one senior uh, facilitator who was there just trying to create complications for us as uh, trainee facilitators, and the situation was amazingly real life, because not only did we have role playing from certain people. We had other people who were in, uh, uh, in dire need of actually sharing what they needed to share. And so uh, the, the simulations that we go through with our empathy facilitation training is really very real. Uh, and I'm thinking about you and I, Kat, so. <laughs> Definitely learned a lot from that one. <laughs> so thank you. You wanna add anything, uh, Bill or Kat, about, or the, about the training? Um, no, I hope to see you all there. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I've been doing it for a while. I'm still enjoying myself. So that's my recommendation. I think you will too. I suppose I'll comment that um, the, when I first started, I was really, really nervous. But the second time around, I can feel my confidence is already there more than I believed the first time. So if anyone's feeling nervous or anything like that, then just relax and, and trust it because it does get easier, even if you're like, oh my God. So I just thought I would comment on that. And you're also holding a series of empathy cafes, right? You want to say something about that? Because we encourage, we want to support you in holding your own empathy cafes with family, friends, whoever. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the way I've decided to go with it is to um, basically look down personal development. So having the empathy circles to bring people together to be empathic, but also to have the topics being selected about personal development. So that's the way I've found it's quite interesting choice of topics, but also bringing in the empathy to the discussions as well. I'm doing that weekly every Thursday.
Yeah, and there's our calendar, our event calendar, where you can see all these empathy cafes listed. So uh, that's on our uh, Facebook event calendar. So the next thing is, is we there's two videos of how to do take part in empathy circles. There's a, there's a nine minute one. It goes a little bit into the you know the benefits of the empathy circle, and then goes into the how to. And then there's a 25 minute video that you know goes really into more depth about how to take part in an empathy circle. So I'm just gonna do a temperature check here. If everybody knows how to do an empathy circle, we can skip the next six minutes, you know, how to. Uh, otherwise, is there anyone that would like to see the how to before we jump in? It, okay, we got one there, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna do the how to. So uh, you can check these videos online. It'll give you a lot more sort of introduction about how to take part. Then I'll now just show the uh, how to video here, which will be six. This is sort of the minimal uh, introduction. And let me share the sound. Optimize for video. And here it goes. Raj, founding director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. I'd like to uh, welcome you to this short presentation on how to take part in a basic empathy circle. So next, let's look at uh, the step-by-step, -step, how to take part. Uh, an empathy start circle starts with two to seven participants. Here on the screen, we have four participants, which I find is an ideal number. There are four basic roles, and the roles rotate among the participants as the empathy circle unfolds. One, the speaker, is the first person to speak. Two is an uh, active listener who actively listens to the speaker. There's the silent listeners. They quietly observe and witness. And the facilitator who organizes, schedules, and hosts the circle. Uh, they also do the timekeeping, and they have some experience with the process and help keep participants in the process. However, everyone has the responsibility to hold the, the, the process and the practice. So to begin with, the facilitator will start the empathy circle. They welcome the participants. Uh, they uh, lead introductions if the participants don't know each other. The facilitator invites participants to give short introductions, for example, their name, where they're from, and something personal about themselves. Uh, the facilitator then reviews the empathy circle process to remind everyone uh, how it works. They announce the discussion topic, if there is one. Even if there is a topic, you can always talk about what is alive for you. That is, what is on your mind in the moment. And five, uh, you can, they set the speaker time limits, perhaps uh, five minutes, for example. And the facilitator then asks who would like to start the, to be the first speaker. So at that point, the participant volunteers to be the first speaker. As speaker, you select who you will, who will be your active listener, <coughs> and you can select anyone that you want. Uh, you speak about the topic given or whatever is alive for you. And so you'll speak a bit until you have maybe expressed an idea or two. And then you want to pause to give the active listener a chance to recap what they understand uh, that you are saying and feeling. Uh, if you say too much, the listener may have difficulty in reflecting it. As the active listener, you are listening to the speaker to get an understanding of what they are saying and what is important to them. You are giving them your full attention as a supportive companion on their inner journey and exploration. Uh, when the speaker pauses, uh, you recap your understanding of what they said and how they feel by reflecting the essence of that in your own words. Uh, you can summarize, paraphrase, or even say the speaker's words back to them. Even though you may have a strong impulse to respond with your own ideas, judgments, analysis, advice, and sympathy, or, or even questions, you know, resist the impulse to do so uh, because uh, 
uh, these common responses block the speaker from moving along their internal journey. You will be able to say whatever you want when it is your turn to be the speaker. If you don't reflect the understanding to the speaker's satisfaction, you, they can always say it again. Then as speaker, you check, do you feel understood to your satisfaction? If you do not feel understood, you can say it again, perhaps in different words. Uh, if you do feel understood, continue sharing. Again, after speaking a bit, pause to give your active listener a chance to recap their understanding of what you said. As the active listener, you again share your understanding of what the speaker said and meant. The cycle of speaking and reflecting continues until you as the speaker do not have anything else you'd like to say or until you get a signal from the timekeeper. Uh, if you get a signal from the timekeeper, then finish up what you're saying in a sentence or two. After you get a final reflection, you can end your turn by saying something like, I feel fully heard or something like that to indicate you are done with your speaking turn. At that point, the roles uh, then rotate. The active listener becomes the speaker. The person they select becomes the new active listener. For everyone having equal time, it is good to select someone that hasn't spoken lately, but it is your choice. The others in the circle become the silent listeners. This process of turn, taking turns in speaking and active listening continues for whatever time is allotted for the empathy circle. And this was uh, just a very short introduction. The best way to learn the practice is taking part and doing it. Uh, there is more in-depth material on taking part in an empathy circle and facilitating one at empathycircle.com. Thank you for listening. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to go into our empathy circles. Let's say we had somebody new, uh, maybe just a quick intro. Matt uh, Boo Bali, do you want to just say hello? Hello. Good morning. Can you just introduce yourself, for your uh, your name, and where you're from? Hey, this is Mehbub here. Uh, I'm from India. Okay. Great. Welcome. Um, so uh, we're going to go into our circles now, and we're going to I'm going to put the I put the did I put to everyone here. We have we're going to have five minute turns. We'll have three circles with about five people in each circle. And the topic is, why are you interested in the empathy circle facilitator training? Or it can be whatever is alive for you. And uh, we're going to have the circle number one is going to be facilitated by Kat. And we're going to stay here in this room. Circle two will be uh, Bill. And circle three by Graham. So if, you're, if that all works for you all. And we have about an hour and about an hour and a half. Uh, so a quarter, we'll go, yeah, for an hour and 10 minutes or so. And then we'll come back into the full group to uh, debrief and I'll send out an announcement of before. And uh, so when we go into the circles, uh, the facilitator will be the first person to listen. So we just can jump right into the practice. Uh, so when someone becomes a speaker, select, you know, speak to uh, the facilitator and we'll just get started right off the, the bat here. And if you think uh, five minutes is too much, you can maybe do four minutes because we have, don't have as much time. So with that, um, here we go into our rooms. See you back here in a little bit over an hour. And I'll be here with you, Kat. Some people sort of jump in and out or start <laughs> yeah. dropping out. So they'll be coming into this room here. Is, uh, yeah, it's um, like we're also, sitting in reception. Yeah, we're in the reception. <laughs> we're having our circle at the reception room. <laughs> exactly. So people might be coming through the door. <laughs> so just heads up. Like waiting yeah. to see the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, that would make me nervous. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the massage yeah. for getting a massage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beauty treatment. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's get started. So um, we're just going to turn to the topic, why are you interested in taking the Empathy Circle Facilitator training or whatever's alive for you right now. Um, we'll go up to five minute turns and then if we feel that's a long time, we can change it to four. Just to let you know as well that I will be using prompts. So if we are approaching the five minutes, you'll see this prompt appear to tell you if you're the speaker to wrap up what you're saying, if you're the listener to finish the reflection. If you do forget to pause, I've also got a little sign for that as well, just to give you a wee reminder to say that um, you've said, you know, hold it a minute to let the person reflect what you've said. Okay, so who would like to be the first speaker? And I'll start with the listening. Uh, I'll give it a go. No bother. Let me set the timer. So we'll just start with up to, up to five minutes. It doesn't have to be the whole five minutes, but that's the mm -hmm. time you've got. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I'll talk about what's alive for me. My name is Kevin, uh, as you all know. Uh, I live with schizophrenia, uh, believe it or not. And it was very hard. I wasn't very diagnosed very well. A, a nurse sat me down and gave me a pamphlet. I was like, oh, okay. So that's the diagnosis of schizophrenia. I thought on reflection, I feel that that's a bit unfair. And unfortunately, what I went through in the system was um, I thought that I may not have empathy and be able to understand people people may fear me. And that was a big issue at the time. Then I was put on a lot of medications, which I didn't want to take. And I've actually stopped taking the medication. And I am of the opinion that things like social connection, uh, which empathy is a big part of can help, maybe not heal, but at least control or stabilize something like chronic schizophrenia. Uh, schizophrenia is obviously hearing voices. I don't hear many voices, but I'll Sometimes I do and I enjoy them. them. Pardon? Just pause you there for a, just pause you there for a moment, just so I can start to reflect. Otherwise, I'll start to lose some of what you're saying. So, um, you were just saying that your your name's Kevin, and you're letting us know you you've been diagnosed with schizophrenia. But it sounds like you've um had that diagnosis um fairly recently. So that um the way that you were told that was, was by a nurse who sat you down and. Um, it sounds like you were uh, given medication that was that you stopped taking because it's something that you believe that wasn't for you. Um, so you're of the opinion that um, empathy and social connection is better and um, to be able to heal and connect with other people. So um, and you mentioned about what schizophrenia is about hearing voices. Good pause. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. So that's a really good synopsis. It was a long time ago. It wasn't recently. So what happened with me? Well, you are correct. It was diagnosed in 2009 with the nurse, but it was sort of re-diagnosed actually quite recently as schizoaffective. And they said, look, this is what it is. And, and, and no one had ever done that for me. And uh, I was inspired to go and look things up myself, uh, to talk to people and see what was coming into my head as I talked to people. And that's kind of how I, I sometimes figure things out that way call that psychic or whatever you want to call that um so that should i pause yes please so you're just clarifying that um it was actually 2009 you were initially um diagnosed though recently you've kind of found, found out a bit more about it and um, being schizoaffective um, and so that's inspired you to be able to start to talk to people but also observe what you're hearing as you're talking to them so you're just learning about that that's exactly right, Kat. Not everybody does it the way I do it. And maybe that's part of my personality, schizophrenia and the like, you know, just being a bit uh, airy fairy. So, but that's the way I like to process it. I think everybody has either an internal or an external world that they're processing and your experience is real to you. And that's what empathy is. It's like, oh, Edwin, you're having an experience. I understand. You know, like, oh, Alison's there listening to stuff and look at you smiling. I get it, you know? So that's what empathy is to me, the connection and the understanding. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, feeling other people's pain, as I said before, and understanding it, you don't have to feel it to understand it. And then you can be like, okay, that person's in pain. We should probably help him. Or you can, uh, empathy can be like, oh, that person's really happy. That's good. I'll help them be happier or okay. more contented or whatever they want you know so okay so if i just pause you there again just so i can um, just reflect again um so you're just saying that um you were just sort of looking at the understanding of empathy and what it meant to you and sort of looking at people what's going on in their experience and 
and how you understand their experience. So although you don't have to feel the pain immediately, you're sort of looking at what's actually going on for them and in, in, in the sense of two levels, whether it's something difficult or actually if they're happy as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everybody's happy. I, I believe that. And then it's like, well, you're happy. Baseline is happy. If it dips, okay, we'll help that. So that, that was my thing with schizophrenia. Like, I was happy. And they're like, oh, you got to take this. You got to take that. So I feel, what's the, what's the saying? I feel fully heard. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're just talking about the baseline of, of people being happy. Um, and then you're reflecting that you feel fully heard. Well, I was just saying that is a, a good way to end. Yeah, that's perfect. So you do feel fully heard? Uh, the king has left the building. Yeah. <laughs> the king has left the building. Okay. Um, okay, thanks. Um, so I'll be the next speaker as I've just been the listener. And Alison, would you be my listener? Yes. Thank you. So um, I find what Kevin's saying really interesting there. It's quite insightful. So I just want to comment on that, first of all. And I'll pause there for you, Alison. Um, you're saying that uh, you found what Kevin had to say very insightful. Yeah, absolutely. I always like to reflect on, on what people's worlds are like and observing what the world is, but then also what's the belief? Because I find that contrast very interesting, like a belief of something, but the reality of it can be very interesting. And so you find that it's uh, really interesting and you enjoy talking to people. And one of the things that you really enjoy doing when you talk to people is kind of understanding like what the reality and the belief of something and maybe they're different or maybe they're the same yeah absolutely because people can tell you something and and then you're like really and your own limiting belief is such a crazy factor that it's so different to what they tell you and you're just like what can I do about that that difference it's always interesting mm, that when you what I'm hearing you say is that when you talk to people, it kind of challenges your own beliefs and maybe expands some of the things that you think are possible. Absolutely. That's good reflection, Alison. Thank you. So um, part of this, the reason for taking the training is to just um, start to connect with people's experience, but also it's, it's connecting with my own as well. So it's really interesting to see connecting with others, connecting with your own, and then sort of connecting in mutual place is really interesting part of it too. So it's um, it's not just about um, you know hearing someone talk or um, kind of understanding where they're going from or coming from, but it's really about how it can impact your own life, and that that's why you kind of feel that empathy training is really important, is because there's a like a two way thing that involves with that. Yes, and I also said as well that um, you've got the yourself and others, but there's also a mutual point or place that you connect on as well. Can, can I ask like clarification or? Yeah, <laughs> it is. I can um, clarify. Yeah. Yeah. What is, um, I think I got confused with like the mutual point. Can you clarify? That's okay. That? I can clarify. Um, so if you try to, you can ask for clarification, but it's trying mm -hmm. to avoid having extra comments. So yeah, I'm just saying, I'll clarify okay. further it's for you to reflect so so it's a common ground when you're with a group of people and they all start talking about the same thing but they could all be from different backgrounds mm. okay so what I heard you say in the clarification is that um, uh, there's different points that people can like say the same thing but because they come from different backgrounds um, it's like they interpret it differently or you are going to interpret that differently. But it's also the other way that they could, you could <laughs> just, it's also the other way in that you're all speaking in the same place and relating. But then if you knew more about them, you'd be like, wow, they're really different to me. But actually we relate in the same place. Mm, uh, that there's more commonality than differences. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I can see how I'm sort of contradicting myself there. <laughs> I'll let you reflect that. Um, the the aside that you just said, the um, that you feel like you're um, 
having <laughs> I'm contradicting myself basically. And you're contradicting <laughs> yourself. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I kind of feel like it's a two-way street though. I feel like I'm not doing that great of a job. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. You're doing great. It's totally fine. Um so just to finish up because my time's going to run out shortly. I would say that um yeah, I really like the training, just being able to slow down and just um, connect with people, basically, in short. Mm, you really um, enjoy the training because you can connect with people and kind of slow down your life and talk to them. Absolutely, Alison. Thanks very much. I feel fully heard if you'd like to select your listener. You could be okay. the next speaker. Uh, so I'll be the next speaker. And Sabita, you would be my listener. I feel uh, so much pressure. It's so much harder. <laughs> uh, okay. I did too. <laughs> um, uh, I would like to reflect back on what Kevin said. Um, I think it was, um, I, I felt that it was really powerful that you shared that about yourself. And I thought that was really courageous of you to do that. So I'll pause. Thanks, Alison. So what I hear you say is um, and you find what Kevin just shared, uh, a part of his life was really courageous and brave of him. So uh, you really like that conversation uh, that he came up and uh, shared it with a bunch of people that he's probably just met. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, I myself, uh, you know, find that it's really hard to sometimes like share more of like my authentic self and that it's taken me like a really long time to um, like not stifle all of my feelings down, but instead like actually live in them and, and, and know that it's okay that I can be inside of my emotions. What I hear you say is you find it difficult to kind of share everything that you're going through and you also understand that it's okay for you to be taking that time to uh, be so open and sh uh, sharing how you feel and what you feel. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, Kevin, when you shared, I was kind of thinking back to a lot of the fear that I have in my own life. Um, you know, and, and when you were talking about how, like when you were diagnosed and, you know, having all these questions of, you know, would people be afraid of you? Like, how does this impact your life? Um, you know, kind of, it's like a change, right. That happens. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I reflected, you know, back on mine too. And that really helped me. Uh, what I understand um, when you when you just spoke is um, you kind of build a connection between what Kevin's going through through his story and you know what it has what it has been for yourself and you know kind of um, uh, to really share uh, what you're uh, going through. So it was a, a great connection, and you feel um, you really feel what Kevin feels. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't know if I, 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 I don't know if people can feel the exact thing that other people feel, but I think that we can maybe relate to them, like through our, maybe what Kat was saying, through our own experiences. So I, I, I hear you say that, uh, you know, through, uh, by Kevin sharing his experience, you've been able to kind of relate to with some of your experiences and find a commonality. Yes. And I feel heard by Sabita, by you, Sabita. Thank you, Allison. Wow. <laughs> okay, it's Sabita, so much <laughs> yes, I, I'm going to talk about how how, how hard this is. Uh, wow! Okay. If you want to select it's, your uh, listener, so that'll be someone that's not heard yet. Do so you want to pick the uh, next listener, and then you can speak to them? And uh, so, Edwin, I think okay. it's the next one. So, um, uh, I I really want to uh, talk about uh, you know 
this experience is is has been so hard and i think uh, i think just i'm grateful for just being here and uh, you know listening to everybody and uh, what i'm experiencing right now is um, how there is this immense pressure um, to uh, you know to be able to to just understand what's going on like when i was talking when i was listening to alison I was thinking, oh my goodness, sh should I be listening or making notes or should I be reflecting? Like, what's the right way to do it? So there's all of these thoughts going on in my head. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is uh, you're finding it a little bit difficult. You know, it's like, oh, wow, this is difficult. Uh, and you're just sort of examining, you're sharing your felt experience around this is like, oh, uh, it's, it feels like a lot of pressure, how to be doing it accurately and you're sort of just sharing the the you know the anxiety that's coming up uh, for you. Like, should I be taking notes? And so maybe a lot of the questions too about what how to do it. Yes, and I think uh, a part of it probably also comes from the fact that generally uh, I believe that I'm I'm a good listener, uh, but it's so much harder in practice when I'm you know when I have to reflect back on what's happening right now. Uh, so um, I also, I think that the other part is uh, having to jump in to experience this as opposed to really knowing the steps and, um, you know, really understanding it before I can, uh, you know, I can actually um, put myself into the shoe of being a, a good active listener. Yeah, so uh, you feel in general that you're a good listener, but this adds another part we have to reflect back. And then that's a bit more challenging. You may don't have a lot of experience with this. Uh, maybe if there'd been kind of more preparation, you'd feel more comfortable. And so you're just kind of articulating your felt experience uh, around this experience. Right. So I do want to add one point that I do have experience uh, working with people because I, I do a lot of like my professionally I'm into OD and learning. So I do have to uh, talk to stakeholders and understand what's going on. Uh, but and I also work with individuals um, that I support, but uh, this one seems a bit different for some odd reason. Mm -hmm. so it's it's probably just myself. unknown. Yeah, mm -hmm. unknown Anymore territory. Oh, yeah. So this is this feels a little different because it's unknown territory. You have a lot of experience in organizational development. You talk to a lot of people, but there's some unknown feeling here. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think on all multiple levels, I think some of the other thoughts that are running in my head are um, uh, because I'm so interested and, and, you know, one of the reasons that I uh, joined uh, this session today is I'm exploring uh, working with empathy, actually creating a, a program uh, on helping people being more empathetic, because I think there's uh, a need for that. Uh, and therefore, I'm, I'm kind of now thinking, is it too much? Like, have I taken too much? Mm. Is it too big a bite that I've taken? <laughs> yeah, so uh, you actually have a project, sounds like, to do some empathy training in your at your work. And now with all what you're experiencing here is like maybe some anxiety, like, oh, if I taken on too big of a task here to, to bring into right. my business environment or. Yeah, just to clarify, I am not working any uh, right now, but this is a personal project that I wanna mm. work on because I think there's a need for uh, individuals and it's specifically including me to be more empathetic, to be a better listener, to be a better individual. And I think that's the re one of the reasons. And um, you know, when I'm experiencing it, it seems, um, I'm, I'm sure I will eventually get there, but it seems more overwhelming than, uh, you know, than what I eventually, like initially thought. Yeah, so you're just wanting to clarify that you're not working in that environment right now, that this is really more about your own personal development. And you're seeing that, oh, maybe this is more complicated and and overwhelming than you initially imagined. Yes, and I'm, I'm totally up for it. I think it's gonna be a great challenge to work on. <laughs> yeah, you're up for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Edwin, I, I feel heard. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, Kevin? Yes, Edwin. Then. Um, yeah, a uh, couple of things, what's coming up? Uh, 
Yeah, it was really uh, a lot came up when you were talking about schizophrenia. The the uh, and and I really appreciated uh, sort of your attitude of uh, you know that about deal using empathy and relationships as a way of addressing it. I, it just seemed like a very healthy way of, of uh, addressing the issue through relationships and empathy. Yeah, I mean, that's a really nice thing to say, Edwin. Um, it, 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 it's not the common approach. So if you and, just want to reflect back what you were hearing me say, if just, um, I'm, what did you? What did it you sounds understand? like you're empathizing with, the, with my choice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, I can kind of feel that. Yeah, um, and I, I really appreciate what the 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 empathy and relationship part that you talked about. So there's a real feeling, a real sense of appreciation for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I when I when you when you say that, it's like oh, you're appreciating the sharing, and I kind of appreciate what you're saying as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's so what I hear. yeah, exactly. Um, so. Uh, Let's see somebody in the white room, but we're not going to let them in. It's too late. Uh, um, let's see. That was a little distraction. So I, I'll just start. Out. I felt a little distraction because somebody came into the white room. Do you want to reflect that? Yeah. So, so you said, look, there's someone there. And then you kind of reflect and said, look, I'm, that's a distraction. You kind of identified it and then threw it over to me. Yeah. And then when, when you were talking about the schizophrenia that, he uh, brought up a memory that uh, Carl Rogers is the person, he's a clinical therapist who sort of developed okay. the empathy circle practice, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. And he had actually talked about schizophrenia as well. And he was seeing that empathy was sort of a healing aspect in that context too. So that was like a memory that came, came up. He's, yeah. So it seems like you're having some memories uh, about Carl Jung Rogers and, then, and sorry Carl Rogers and relating it to my condition and the fact that you're kind of validating what I said that's mm -hmm. kind of what it, that's kind of yeah. what I hear exactly yeah. yeah so uh so I have a lot of curiosity about what's uh you know what is that condition uh schizophrenia and the role of empathy and Mm. And he, he made the case, and I don't have a lot of experience with it, so I can't speak so much from personal experience, but he was just making this, the, the, just talking about the benefits of that feeling of connection, that if you have like mm. schizophrenia, you're not like disconnected, you know, from other people, but that you have that warmth of, of connection through empathy, and that that's very healing yeah it seems like you're emphasizing connection mm -hmm. or at least carl rogers was and and the fact that if you have schizophrenia you're still connected to people which is kind of healing in itself yeah with through empathy yeah so the other thing was what uh, so Bita Bita was saying uh just about uh you know when you first do this, this is maybe the first time, there's a little anxiety, but it does get a lot easier after, we usually like to go three rounds of the empathic listening. And by the third round, you're starting to settle into it and it just starts getting easy. So for the first couple of rounds, there's a little bit of anxiety. Uh, you know, am I doing it right? A lot of questioning, uh, but it, it does become much easier, you know, over time. I hear you explaining the rules <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, reassuring me that it gets easier. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it was and, more, um, I was sort of uh, trying to reassure Sobita about it. <laughs> she seemed to be a bit anxious. And so I was kind of trying to have some reassurance there. Nice. Do you want to just reflect that back? That uh, you, you're like, oh, I wasn't reassuring you. I was reassuring her. Uh, like, <laughs> like being totally honest <laughs> yeah exactly i was just trying to be clear on that so yeah i feel fully heard thank you kevin i feel really thanks heard. edwin okay kevin if you want to select a new listener that's not heard you yet oh okay you're the next speaker you're going to go oh, around wow. again you're the next speaker 
All right, I'm going to go down. On my screen, I see Alison Stansbury, if you don't yeah. mind. Uh, so I've got to talk about some more stuff on my mind, and then we'll pause, and I'll, I'll let you kind of throw it back at me. So, Alison, uh, the reason I chose you uh, is because you got a friendly face. So, uh, Kevin, uh, you said that you chose me because I have a friendly face to be your listener. Exactly. Um, so, uh, this is difficult. In terms of the, like with schizophrenia, sometimes I worry that I'm not doing things right. Mm. So, what I'm hearing you say is that you have a lot of like worry that um, because of your diagnosis of schizophrenia, that you're not doing things like right or the right, right. way. Well, according to the person you're talking to, it's like, oh shit, mm. have I done the wrong thing, annoyed that person. Furthermore, then you're kind of like, well, isn't it nice to be different? So it's kind of the Frank Sinatra, you got to, I did it my own way. So you have um, like two ways of thinking. So it's your worry about doing things right, you know, based on the person that you're talking with. Um, but then you have this other side that says, oh no, you know, I'm doing it my own way. And you right. uh, did a great Frank Sinatra reference. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Um, so, you know, um, I think empathy is very individual. I know it's it's not about getting it right all the time. The, it's just about creating that connection and knowing, okay, I think we felt that together, but maybe we're not feeling this together. There's a That's a really complicated point, but um, does that make sense? Um, so what I, I think I'm hearing you say is that, um, you know, empathy is really important because here, can you, can you re re reflect back on that? Yeah. So can, empathy is about connection. So you go like, oh, we're feeling uh, happiness just then, or at least mm -hmm. I, that was my experience that we were both feeling happiness at the same point in time. And then other times when I, I reflect and I look at my situation or I look at how I am with everyone else, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm doing some stuff here and the, the internal world for me or the, the world for me is maybe different to everybody else right here. And that's kind of schizophrenia. Whereas maybe someone without, sorry, I'll, I'll stop there and maybe elaborate. I don't want to give you too okay. much. So, um, so that empathy is really important for connection mm. and that um, sometimes you have a lot going on inside of you and you relate that back to um, schizophrenia. Yeah. Good work. I, I don't know, like um, the other one is, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. It was a good point too. Shouldn't have stopped. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to ha be completely mutual the whole time. Yeah, we're both happy. We're both happy. We're both joyful. We're both joyful. But like sometimes, uh, like, you know, the old saying is opposites attract or, you know, things like that. So that's kind of nice too. If, if we're all the same, life would be very boring. No offense to people that are the same. So that um, uh, what I hear you saying is yeah. that, um, you know, actually you being different is a really good thing because life would be boring if, you know, we were all the same or we all had the same viewpoint or um, different, you know, things that make us who we are. Exactly. My point with being different is it's okay to be yourself. And so that it's, you know, it's not just being different, but it's like, it's okay with who you are as your own person and as yourself. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. So, 
Um, what's that? Time? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Allison. Well, listen. Well said. I can be a lot to handle. <laughs> um, I would like uh, my listener to be Cat. Yes, absolutely. I'll listen to you. Okay. <laughs> um, so with what, actually, this is bringing up a lot with like Sabita and Kevin and maybe even a little bit of what Edwin said, reflecting back is um, I deal a whole lot with like perfectionism. And so, <laughs> you know, knowing what to do at all times is like a safety thing for me and like to mitigate my fear and anxiety. So you're just relating to what Sabita, Kevin and Edwin are saying and you're looking at your perfectionism that you've got and how you like to really know everything that needs to be done at every moment so that you can mitigate your fear. Yeah, like even, like I, I was like fully engaged with Kevin, but my, I have like such anxiety, like even talking to other people sometimes that it, um, it, <laughs> it like makes me really stressed out. And so it's like, I want to be, fully in the conversation, but sometimes I can't be because I feel that way. So you're just saying that you were, you were, you had a connection point towards Kevin, you were in the conversation, but then you've also got the stress kind of come behind that where you're really trying to be present, but it's trying to kind of be present as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes it feels like, like a, like an out of body experience sometimes. Cause it's like, I need to like step away from myself. And I think it's like a protection measure almost, um, you know, and it, it, I think it like comes from like a lot of fear. So you're just sort of looking at it and almost observing it by observing, not being in it. <laughs> you're sort of observing being in it, but stepping out of it, but you're observing that. And um, how you see, maybe it's some kind of protection mechanism. Um, that, that's all that I have to say. I feel heard, Kat. Thank you. You just feel fully heard. That's all you have to say at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, could I speak to um, Sabita? Absolutely. So everyone's saying so many different things and then my head's collecting them all like, oh, I want to say that and I want to say this. And then it gets full and then I can't think of anything. <laughs> What I hear you say is uh, you want to be present, you want to be listening to all the conversations that are going on, but at the same time, you're kind of missing out and you're thinking you shouldn't be missing, missing on something that's being talked about. So, yeah, there's just lots, so many things that I just end up being too excited. <laughs> I hear you being excited about what you're listening to, so you want to kind of contribute and participate in everything that's going around. Yes, and that normal ha normally happens when you've been around a circle a, a couple of times, you've started to gather different things. So then I always remember, slow down <laughs> and just breathe. What I hear you say, you've been around a few circles uh, and, you know, that excitement kind of creeps in because you're listening to everybody and then you want to talk about it. But at the same time, you're conscious of the fact that you should slow down and take a breath and maybe step back. Yes, and then once you slow down and breathe for a moment, you can actually start to tune in to what you really want to say. Right, so, so I hear you say that uh, slowing down and you know taking a step back and breathing in helps you focus more on what's going on, specifically to do with the conversation that you're listening in. Yes, absolutely. So one kind of thread that I'm relating to is Alison's comments about uh, being in the work environment and then Kevin's comments about being yourself. Uh, so both of those areas I'm sort of relating to because of the work, in, work environment I work in, I really want to be myself, but that's not the easiest thing to do. So I, I hear you uh, pick up pieces both from Kevin and Allison's uh, conversation about uh, this paradox of uh, being yourself at the same time, not being able to really do that at, in a work environment. Yes. Yeah, so I'm sort of in the process of kind of just getting more comfortable with just being who I am. And 
after a while, you just start to not care about things you used to the same. So I guess that's maybe part of getting older. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I I guess you're you're trying to um, go through the process of being yourself, and uh, and I also think that you you're conscious of the fact that uh, uh, you want to be just be just be yourself um you know eventually that's what's yeah coming to me yes and to kind of uh, finish one more point I think for me the, the family of origin I've come from is so opposite to this structure that the more I become me the less I become them and I've just had to accept that I am just different from them all so that's part of it as well the more comfortable I get to be different from the family of origin just the more it's like oh okay <laughs> So I, I hear you uh, kind of um, compare your indiv- individuality and how you are different to, to being completely opposite or different from, from your family. And I, uh, you know, and I hear you uh, talk about saying that the more you want to be yourself, you see yourself being different from them. Absolutely, Savita. Thank you very much. It's a good reflection. I feel really heard. Thank you. Mm. I'm gonna, so I have Edwin again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, listening. Um, well, this is uh, really interesting. Yes, this is, it was much better this time. <laughs> so uh, what do we want to talk about? So it's getting easier. It was better this time of listening, maybe less anxiety. Yes, yes definitely. I think, uh, and I think I can, I can kind of um, uh, resonate with uh, what Kat just said. Uh, you want to listen to everything you want to, you know, you want to talk about everything that's going around, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're really making a difference. So you want to absorb these sense of, you know, essence of what's going on. So instead of just being there, you want to, you want to do, you know, what's right. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of relating with uh, what Kat is saying about, oh, you want to kind of pick up on everybody else's comments, but then again, you also want to sort of speak from what's going on inside of you. Yeah, and uh, you know, at the same time, I think uh, as as in as human beings, or probably maybe I'd related to be being in the professional world for too long, and maybe that having that competitive edge of wanting to talk and wanting to share and wanting to um, you know uh, probably um, maybe prove a point by you know sharing what you have and what you know instead of sitting back and stepping uh, aside and just listening and being present Mm, so you're comparing uh the work environment where it's more competitive you're trying to push a point you're you know being uh, sort of in a competitive mode versus really maybe connecting to yourself and speaking from your own experience Yes. And, um, um, you know, I, I absolutely, um, you know, I, I feel so comfortable um, in, in this session to be able to like connect with and talk to, uh, you know, we don't know each other, like to just be able to kind of just be there to listen and connect and talk is, is I feel is a great opportunity. So I'm hearing a real appreciation for being able to just listen and talk that this is yeah, really appreciating this opportunity. Yes. And I'm, I'm so glad I, I came in today because I've been, I've been meaning to join the sessions uh, sooner, but something or the other came up and I was like, no, I have to do this. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm here today. Yeah, so a real sense of happiness that you're here before you were maybe procrastinating a bit, but I've got to do this, and now I'm happy that I did it. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so much, Eck Lord Edwin. Okay, great. I'll speak to Allison then uh, next. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I want to make the point about uh, in the empathy circle, you can say whatever is alive for you, like whatever is, you know, whatever your own experience is, and everything is welcome. So to reiterate that in the empathy circle, you can say whatever is alive for you, and um, that, you know, everything is welcome. 
And the other thing is, is I, I found it also helpful to share any anxiety I have, because if I share the anxiety, it kind of gets out and I can kind of move through it. So in terms of the empathy circle, if you, and I hope people have done it here about sharing the anxiety and hopefully, you know, it kind of felt like it helped release it and the anxiety and fear, because I remember hearing you talk about, ah, oh, maybe this is your perfectionism is out of fear. Uh, to say that um, it can really help you to, you know, talk about your anxiety and um, you mentioned what I had talked about previously of my anxiety and that it can really release like your fear involved mm -hmm. in the process. Yeah, and I appreciate what everyone was saying about, you know, tapping into what is really coming up, you know, in you and, and so I'm kind of sitting with that too. It's like, what's really wanting to arise i feel sort of this sense of spaciousness and sort of nothing's really coming up in, into it mm. um so that um oh edwin i kind of can you clarify or yeah, say that again how i feel in the moment i feel sort of a spaciousness there's this big feeling of spaciousness i'm saying well what's going to come up into that like nothing's coming up so i'm mm. just yeah so that there's like you your feeling is that there's like a lot of space and you're mm -hmm. you know not sure of what will come up into that space that you are feeling and now i'm noticing it's really i want to i've been thinking of how do i listen better more deeply just you know because uh and so i kind of sit with what can i do to really listen uh, better to when I'm doing reflections and listening, what can I do to listen with, uh, yeah, more deeply? I think that's sort of what I'm sort of sitting with that question. Mm, so the, you're really sitting with the question of, you know, how can you listen um, better and more deeply? Um, yeah, and, and sometimes I listen just sort of trying to get the ideas and reflect at one point and the other is I try to sense what's coming up kind of in this part of my body when I listen and kind of speak from my, sort of my body. Uh, so yeah, it's, I'm still, still learning. That's a lifelong <laughs> learning to how to listen more deeply. Yeah. So there's two ways that you're sort of, um, you know, listening and, um, you know, kind of still learning mm -hmm. how to listen. And the first way is the, you know, kind of listening up here and kind of like seeing how it relates and then reflecting back. And then the second way of listening is like more in your body and how it's making you feel when you listen to someone. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm, I'm still trying to, I, I have some curiosity how other people uh, uh, listen because I know when I have a lot of sort of management to do, like as a facilitator, part of my attention is on the management of everything that's happening. And it sort of takes me out of just purely listening. So, uh, so there, there's all these different dynamics of, of, you know, how do we listen? You know, how do I listen more deeply? And it's nice not to have any responsibilities, just to be present, just to listen and not have to be thinking about the structure, people in the waiting room, people in other groups, you know, so th those kind of distractions, yeah. Um, so I'm hearing you uh, talking about some of the distractions that you have when you're more in like a management position um, in the, the circle and um, that it's sometimes nice just to, you know, not have those distractions and instead be able to listen and, um, you know, really think about how you can do that better and what that entails. And then I also wonder about the attention and awareness because I sense my awareness and where is the awareness in my body? Is it, is it kind of in, in my head area? I feel a little bit of awareness, but I also feel sort of a spacious awareness. So really kind of looking at the nature of awareness and that's my time mm -hmm. to thinking about that. Um, and so um, your kind of final point was, you know, with listening is that, um, you know, you're thinking about like the awareness and where your awareness is and, um, you know, and then um, Kat pulled the time card. And so you yeah. said that that was your time. <laughs> exactly. I feel fully heard. Thank you, Allison. <laughs>
uh, Kevin. Um, Hello, <laughs> Allison. <laughs> so I find this really hard because how I like I find this really hard because I want to like have a conversation with someone. <laughs> mm, mm, in... Me too. I hear you. You feel this is really hard because you want to have a conversation rather than like uh, repeating. And I feel the same. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I, I kind of realized though that mm. like maybe me trying to have a conversation with someone is like, like kind of like taking their spotlight in a way. And okay. like, maybe like that's, less empathetic than what I think it is yeah so you feel when you take the conversation and whether it's hey I'm saying this yes I'm listening you're taking the spotlight away from other people um which I disagree with but um just try to reflect <laughs> oh sorry it's okay um but I hear you yeah and reflecting on that like I can see where you're coming from as well yeah. I I also feel like maybe you and I were the wrong people to reflect on this conversation because we want to have a conversation. Yeah. Let's just break <laughs> out now. <laughs> so you feel that you and I maybe have a, a different uh maybe I'm just throwing this out there, communication style. Like when you said you and I, it kind of sounded like you and I are in like a a different or well, we agree on the fact that yeah conversation is there's so many dynamics to it but sometimes you slow down whatever that's what mm -hmm. i struggle with but yeah i kind of hear where you're coming from yeah just i think to, sorry <laughs> just try and say what she's saying just to hold it yeah. as best you can but you're doing really well go for it Allison. <laughs> just say I what she says it it is hard though and it's good though to kind of like like sit in the moment so it's good to sit in the moment. Oh, um, I think that it's like a really hard thing to do, um, but it's also oh, like, yes. like really valuable. So it's, it's, it's good to sit in the moment, can be hard, but it is valuable in the long run. Yes. Um, and then I kind of, I don't really know what else to talk about. <laughs> you don't um, really know what else to talk about. <laughs> Say whatever. Um, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I've been heard, Kevin. Thank She's you. Been heard, uh, you've been heard. Thank you. Okay, Kevin, who would you like to speak to next? Ah, oh, me. Oh, I'll, I'll speak to Sabita. Hey, Sabita. Hey, Kevin. Uh, I'm going to test your memory a little bit. So I'm going to extend it out a little bit. Okay, so I'll talk a bit more than what I usually do. Um, so I hear you, you're going to test my memory. So you're going to talk a bit more before I reflect on All what right. you just said. Exactly. So like tonight's been a really good opportunity to um, see different communication styles. And I think when you appreciate other people's ones, you can appreciate your own. So um, uh, I hear you talk about the fact that uh, today, tonight's been a great opportunity to connect with different people who have varying communication styles and you appreciate it. Exactly. Um, and also when you appreciate others you can appreciate your own uh, i hear you say uh, that when you appreciate others uh, you can appreciate your own communication style as well that's right uh, sometimes it's hard because you just got to make things up on the fly and you don't want to look silly and you don't want to let people down I, I i hear you say that you know uh you're probably uh, concerned or maybe worry about uh, uh, sounding silly specifically when you have to make things up uh, specific for this conversation. Mm. That's why it's good in some situations where you have prepared material, 
that you can kind of come back to and emphasize the prepared material. Uh, I hear you, uh, you know, really put uh, importance on how the prepared material is so helpful at times when you don't have something specific to talk about. Correct. Tonight I have no prepared material, as you can tell. So it's a bit of a different approach. Um, so I apologize. Uh, I, I hear you uh, talk about the fact that if it was a different uh, situation and if you would have had prepared material, this conversation would be different. That is correct. Um, doing it on the fly is still fun. You don't know what you're going to say. You know you're going to say something. You know you're going to get a reaction. Usually it's a good reaction, so that's fine. Uh, I hear you enjoy the spontaneity part of it uh, because, uh, you know, you, you probably get to hear different reactions and uh, how do people feel or reflect on what you have to say. Exactly. Um, further, I think empathy, uh, like we're kind of doing the same thing over, but it comes in many shapes and sizes. And if we were all the same, life would be very boring. So I, I hear you talk about what you, um, when you mentioned uh, that empathy is different for different people and they uh, probably, um, you know, demonstrate it in a different way. And uh, that's the beauty of it. You find that it's, it's um, it, you know, there is merit in everybody being different. Otherwise everybody would just be the same if empathy were, was the same for everybody. Yes, exactly. Um, I believe in biodiversity. So like, it's good to have one or many of everything because that creates more. And that's kind of what I want in life. So I, I hear you uh, appreciate that when you have diversity, you have different people and you know you you have a difference of thoughts and difference of opinions and that kind of adds value to the conversation. Correct. So, you know, we live in a democracy and that's the beauty of it. Everybody brings something different to the table. Everybody's intelligent in their own way. And uh, that's, that's the beauty of it. I hear you appreciate um, what everybody brings to the table and how they um, share their own individual, uh, you know, viewpoints. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling really heard. I'll keep speaking because there's no time sign that I can see. When you feel heard, it's kind of like relaxing and you can kind of go, got it. And then you, it's like a push and pull. So uh, I hear you appreciate that when you're, uh, when you feel heard, it's easy for you to communicate. You feel relaxed and you know, you're, you're, you probably find it easier to put yourself out there. Uh, yes. Uh, fully heard. <laughs> Thanks, Sabita. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Uh, so, Kat? Yes, I'm here, Lister. <laughs> what do I talk about? <laughs> I'm, um, I'm going to talk about um, this project that I'm working on. Um, so, I'm, I'm a part of a group. Um, I'm a part of a group. Uh, it's like a mastermind group, but it's it's in a beta beta stage. So I'm a part of an early uh, group that comes together and is working on uh, their worthy goals. So you're just questioning what to talk about and you've decided to talk about your project, which is to do with some mastermind where you're coming together in a very early stages and kind of group. And then uh, yes. you're looking at worth, worthy goals. Yes. So um, the concept of worthy goals is by the author, uh, Michael Bungay Stanier, and he's, uh, he's, actually, uh, uh, he's actually the one who's running this group. And I'm fortunate to be a part of this uh, session. It's open only right now for 25 people. And we have a tiny, like a small cohort of five people that come from different backgrounds. And we, we've kind of put together information on what's important to us and we're kind of helping each other um, make, meet that or make that happen. So this is actually part of a concept from an author, um, Michael 
something and, mm -hmm. and he, um, you've got a group of 25 working together so there's not a lot of spaces you said and you're all just putting together um, some ideas so far um, uh, and I'll talk specifically about my worthy goal. My worthy goal in this chapter that I'm in is about creating a, um, you know, creating a product or a service which helps people be more empathetic. And, uh, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm also attending the Empathy Circle. So you're just looking at your own worthy goal and how you, you're interested in creating a product or service. And that kind of brings you here to why you're interested in the Empathy Circles. Yes, uh, and like I mentioned before, um, it's not necessarily just about the product or the service. It's about actually, uh, you know, having more meaningful conversations, uh, bringing people together, and you know, listening more, uh, working on your curiosity. So those are some of the things that are important to me. So um, you're just saying that, as you mentioned earlier, you're looking at uh, more meaning within it. So. It's, it's also about connecting people and, and listening and um, being able to be more curious with each other as well. So you find that really important to you? Yes, and, uh, I, I really appreciate the connections I've made. I really appreciate uh, people just being so open and sharing a part of their lives to complete strangers. And I think that's been a humbling experience for me. So you're just expressing appreciation and humbleness for being able to uh, meet people who are being open and sharing with you. Absolutely. Uh, I, I feel hurt, Kat. Thank you. Thank you, Savita. Um, Edwin, would you be my listener? Yep, listening. So, yeah, um, I love the sound of Savita's project. I think that's a really good initiative. It'd be really interesting to see what comes out of that. Um, that's worth is such a, well, it's, it's a difficult area to get to and deal with when it's, I feel it's quite a deep area that's hard to conceive of. Hmm. So you're really appreciating Subita's uh, project and you see that it's sort of a deep and maybe difficult uh, area to get into. Yeah, but it also it depends on your definitions as well because that's where everything always starts. What, what's the definition that I'm thinking of? Is it the same one that she's thinking of? So that's another question that I have. Yeah, so a question that's coming up is about definitions. Are we talking about the same thing? How are we defining these terms? And to see the challenge of definitions and meanings. Yeah, so it makes me sort of think about the project that I am sort of doing with Empathy Circles and personal development. So at the moment, every week, I just pick a little topic and I just say, we're going to explore this. So get a little definition, explore it, put it in the circle, and then just see what comes out of that, see what people bring out of their own ideas. Mm, so it's reminding you of the other project you're working on is you set a topic and, and then you just kind of put it out there and you kind of just see what sort of comes up ar around that topic. I think there's a little bit of prep for it too. But... Yeah, so sometimes I put a little article to help people be inspired so that they've got an idea of talking points, but also not too strict that they're forced to do any homework every week so they've got the option of just feeling free and expressive or focusing on a point that they want to make within that so the uh, approach is you have something that they can sort of read look at sort of prepare and you don't put a lot of stress on it they can do it or not so you're not putting any pressure on them Yes, yeah, so we did exploring self-empathy and at the beginning of the circle everyone was like I don't know what this is but by the end of it they were all they're all right in there um, mm -hmm. with all sorts of things that we come up with it was really good. Mm -hmm. So for example you had the topic of self-empathy and everybody's saying I don't know what, what this means and and uh, then once they got into it they really all kinds of sounds like interesting things came came up. Yes. Really so, dug into it yeah. Yeah absolutely so Initially, I've been picking kind of light topics um, to kind of start people off and not go right in there. But at the same time, I'd love to pick on more tough topics like perfectionism is a really good one that I'd, lo I'd love to do. Uh, but it's also you don't want to make people too worried mm. about what it is if it's something that's also about being worried. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'd love to do those kind of topics in time. So you're looking at uh, kind of in more in-depth sort of topics like take perfectionism and like dig into it but you don't want to get sort of 
too deep into something, but you're kind of, so you're kind of exploring different topics. Yeah, and normally, like, we did motivation as well one week, so that actually, those kind of topics bring up other ones anyway, so as a result, you're not focusing too much on a problem, it's more about a solution or a positive kind of focus. Mm, so you're having something like uh, topics that, uh, that aren't so problem-oriented, but are more uh, coming up with solutions to I don't know if I quite got that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A positive mm -hmm. focus rather than uh -huh. focusing on oh. something that's, that's problematic or difficult. Oh, uh -huh. so instead of focusing on some a big problem, you focus on sort of a more positive sort of a topic. Uh, yeah, and I also yeah. make sure I say to them, but we're talking about motivation, but you're free to talk about demotivation as well. Mm -hmm. So you've got the balance. Uh, so I do uh -huh. tell them that so they feel yeah. comfortable. So it's like you frame it in sort of a positive way, talk about motivation, but then you can talk about the negative side as, as well, if you want, but frame it within the positive. Yeah, try and drive people towards the positive, but with freedom to be able to speak about whatever they want to as well. Yeah, it sounds like you're really trying to make it a positive experience for people and not have it be too overwhelming uh, and give them some <clears throat> flexibility too. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, to finish, I think I don't know where it's going to go. It's just sort of sort of something I work, I pick every week, and over time, I just wonder how, what will it be like once I've done all those circles with all of those topics? Who will I be in a year? Like, I'll probably be a completely different person. I don't know. I'm curious to see how it will be once I've explored all the topics. Yeah. So you're just have have a sense of curiosity. Like if you explore all these topics, what's going to be the impact and effect on you? Or is it going to change you as a person? And you're sort of yeah. sitting with that question, some real curiosity about that. Yeah. And hopefully all for the better. <laughs> uh -huh. I won't still get there. I won't know then. Yeah. Hopefully it's going to have a positive, it's going to be positive sort of experience, positive change. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel fully heard, Edwin. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Uh, then I'll speak to Kevin. I just have three minutes. So uh, cool. here we go back. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it's the, what topics for empathy circles is a big topic of its own? Like, how do we set good, engaging topics? So you've asked the question, what topics uh, do we are good to set for an empathy circle? And you've sort of posed the question, how do we set good topics? Because when there's a bit of conflict in the group, it kind of adds some energy and dynamics to the group. Like we have people of opposing views because the, and the empathy circle keeps it from blowing up because people have to be slow, they have to reflect. And so having some conflict in the group is actually kind of fun so, <laughs> and energizing. It sounds, like you've done this a lot and mm -hmm. so you understand that having the conflict in the group creates excitement mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of different and, and so like conflict like i disagree or whatever is a good thing yeah for example we did we we're trying to bridge political divides so we had pro-choice and pro-life people in the group and there's some leaders mm -hmm. right from those movements and you know it was that can blow up pretty quickly, that topic. But with the empathy circle, we really got into some of the deep roots of people's experience. So it was really quite fascinating. And, and the circle was able to uh, hold the, in, a, in a constructive way, because there's a lot of growth that can come out of conflict. So you had a pro-choice and pro-life debate, which can get quite heated. And you did it in an empathy circle style and it seemed to contain itself. Mm -hmm. And it was also a lot of growth and learning uh, too by using the empathy circle. And there was a lot of growth and learning uh, yeah. from using the empathy circle as well. Exactly. And I am thinking of a topic like empathizing with uh, racism, empathizing with colonialism, empathizing with all the, you know, the the. the so sort of these sort of topics are, are empathizing with hate, you know, so to kind of shift the, the direction from being against something to empathizing with it and transforming. So I think that would be a very engaging uh, topic. I think it would stimulate a lot of people get kind of riled up about it. So you're doing some thinking, mm -hmm. throwing ideas out there, empathizing with racism. 
empathizing with colonialism and empathizing with hate. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a different approach. Yeah, exactly. And I just closed the room, but it's it's sort of addressing these issues with empathy instead of fighting, you kind of transform it through empathy. So I think it could be very healing. Thanks, Edwin. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, uh, for taking part. Thanks, Kat, for setting that. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. So everyone should be coming back in about 30 seconds. They sometimes they wait to the last minute to get their last reflection in. <laughs> Can I ask a quick question while everybody's yeah, sure. coming back? So uh, typically, do we have rules for the speaker to say you've got to speak only for a few minutes before somebody can reflect, or how does it work? Uh, you speak, it's good to pause, you know, periodically pause. And if you're the listener, if it's like, oh, this is too much, you can step in and say, oh, could you please pause so I can reflect back? Great. Uh, so those are just some little tips. Uh, and after a while, you get sort of a sense of how, when to pause. You know, you can see people in the group kind of, uh, they kind of embody how to list, you know, how to create those pauses. So um, we're going to go around and uh, I don't know if uh, Kat, if you want to call on people, we're going to take like 30 seconds uh, yes. just to uh, share any learnings. Yeah, I'll just put it in the chat. Yes, absolutely. Um, so um, how about Dustin? Would you like to get started first and let us know any learnings or insights you had from the circle we'd like to share? Yeah, absolutely. I'll get started. I uh, I found that this was uh, this empathy circle was the first time that I tried to break away from the just talking about why I'm joining an empathy circle, and I just kind of shared what was on me today, and that was my chemistry, and that that I'm I'm working away on some homework right now. It's, it's difficult, and it was good to feel heard. I got to try that out and and just share, and somebody else had to listen to me. And <laughs> I mean, I have that in my regular life, but to have it in a open form like this is kind of awesome too so that you know it, that was a good experience i needed to do that and then it was kind of awesome too because everybody else kind of shared like that afterwards so everybody kind of was like oh i guess it's time to do that now so that was that worked for me and it was good to just hear where people were at because that's what i wanted to get to this whole time was you know really uh what what are people interested in and what is it that uh, or what what are people struggling with i like to hear what people are struggling with and I like to hear, I actually do like to hear it because, you know, we all struggle with very, we're, some of us are different from one another, but we're not that different from one another at the same time. And it's good to hear each other's struggles. So that's what I wanted to hear. Great, Dustin. Thank you. Um, so we'll hear next from Meha Bubali. Um, if you want to tell us how you got on, about up to 30 seconds or so. Yeah, hey, thank you. Uh, first of thing, I just want to thank Bill uh, and my uh, teammates in that breakout room. Uh, I understood the power of uh, at least pausing and uh, clarifying, uh, asking for at least clarifications. And most thing I understood is uh, how difficult it is to understand and uh, try to put it in our own words. So it's a lot of practice uh, which kind of eye opener for me i can say it's a, it needs a lot of work from my side uh, to excel in this area uh, but the method what bill was mentioning it's really great uh, and uh, i could see a lot of practitioner especially fanny and all are very great whatever she was reflecting back i could really uh, could not reach to that level, but uh, I could notice that the achievement or the level how this group people are doing. That was a great learning for me. Thank you for my group as well, and thank you for this session. Thank you very much. That was a lot of insight there. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, Rob, would you like to let us know any learnings or insights you'd like to share for up to 30 seconds or so? Sure. I also would like to thank my group and Graham did an amazing job facilitating. So thank you, Graham. Um, it was just a really good reminder for me of how difficult it is to just get rid of all the other distractions and listen intently to, to what's alive in someone else. And also, uh, as difficult as it was, how powerful that is to, to give someone that gift of, of really listening to what's going on in them. So I, I really enjoyed it and I look forward to 
to learning more about how to facilitate and share that experience with the rest of the world. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Rob. And Alison, would you like to share next how you felt, how, any learnings or insights you got? Um, I think I was uh, more surprised than anything. Um, I really enjoyed being in my group and it went a whole lot quicker than what I thought that it was because it was so interesting hearing from everyone. Um, I would catch myself like really trying to listen and then also at the same time like being like no like I'm it, it would be like I would be trying to like filter it through my own experience instead of listening to um, you know, say back what they were saying. And so um, that was a really good thing for me to kind of be aware of and, and notice, you know, for the future. Brilliant. Thank you, Alison. And Anouk, how about yourself? Uh, I guess I found the experience still really interesting, but I was more uh, thinking this time about um, the the slight um, difference between when listening to someone, if um, you're just repeating them wo the words to them, uh, words for words, which would be not really, maybe not as empathic as if you rephrase the words in another way, but then if you rephrase them, are you not including your own ideas into it? So I was just <laughs> got into this puzzle. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand that one, Anouk. Thank you. And Franny, how about yourself? I am, I'm sitting with a sense of dissonance and confusion. It was interesting to try the slightly different format and I think I prefer authentic relating. Um, so it was interesting to, to be present and witness other people. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure this format is for me. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. And um, Julian, how about yourself? Any takeaways you've got from the session? Uh, what is the procedure for continuing this? A possible answer, join this LinkedIn group. I think Edwin, Edwin will let us know more shortly. Is there anything else that you want to share with us from what you experience in the circle? Uh, I had 30 seconds. Do I have still two? How many? You could, you, just roughly about 30 seconds. Do you have anything else you want okay. to share? Uh, okay. Um, so I like it. I mean, I, 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 uh, years have passed uh, since I, I first talked uh, with Eddie, Edwin Rooch. We're still very interested in uh, things like empathy. I value it very much. So it's really, it's easy to reel me in, to co-opt me in uh, um, making this project go. Thank you, Julian. And Sabita, how about yourself? For me, I have uh, a couple of learnings. Uh, one of them is as I'm listening to everybody, I'm trying to play the role of the active uh, listener. Uh, and uh, at the same time, the other learning for me has been that, um, you know, um, when there's a, a conversation happening, I'm sorry, I just got distracted by a phone call, <laughs> admission here. And the other learning for me was uh, I went through the whole cycle of being anxious to I feel much better. Perfect. Thank you, Sabita. And Kevin, how about yourself? Ah, hello team. Yeah, good, good experience. What a journey. Uh, we, so we had five of us, so it was kind of a bit smaller than what this is. And bit of a bit of a journey. Uh, so I, I revealed that I have schizophrenia and I like it, and I am trying to understand it. And we we're kind of like, oh, you know, what's going on there? Like my listening is different to other people's listening, and so like when I'm like listening to Edwin, I'm trying to repeat back what they say, but in my own words and they're like no, no no just say what we said <laughs> i was like i can do that too but i prefer to add but so that was kind of what i learned it's kind of nice to to, to repeat what people say that's really cool because obviously you want to hear what they said but then you want to add a little bit to it so you'd be like oh kev just explained his experience 
that was really cool. So it's like push pull. Um, we talked about differences, biodiversity, and you know the different hearing things and stuff. So yeah, it was a good experience. <laughs> uh, lots of laughs. So yeah, that was fun. I'd do it Great, again. Thank you. Yeah, super, Kevin. Thank you very much. And Graham, how about yourself? Oh, uh, I I really really enjoyed the session, and uh, uh, I think about what uh, Franny says, where uh, this format is a little structured, uh, but then again, it gives me an ideal opportunity to learn how to listen. And today, what became uh, what's sort of ticking up in my little list of awarenesses is, is how to speak so that I can be heard, but also how I can speak in such a way and respond to my listener, which is uh, uh, also empathic. Um, and so there's the, the, the structure gives me these opportunities for learning. And uh, I also really enjoy what uh, Kevin says, because in my own little way, I have a, a schizoid background and uh, it's just, great to be out there. I'm not yet that liberated, but I just want to be out there with my feedback. So it's been exciting and I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, Graham. And Bill, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, so it's just really interesting to see people, you know, um, kind of experience it and also, you know, feel somewhat dissonant or removed from the practice. I just want to say to people, it's not a judgment on you whether you're happy or not if this practice is not for you or not for you at that time. I just want to say that we'll be here ready to listen if any, you know, if at some point you want to, uh, you know, come in and be heard. That's all. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Okay, I'll go next and then we'll hand back to Edwin. So. I just want to say a couple of things. Firstly, thanks to my group. That was really interesting. We had a lot of topics with lots of smiles and it was really good fun. And also for me, um, I've been doing this for almost four months now. So I've kind of come from a position of being up in my head, like thinking all the time and barely like a bit of cognitive dissonance in terms of disassociation, not being present, but it's really helping me ground to really be more present with people. And that has affected um, my family relationships. I'm able to start fixing a relationship with my sister now that I never thought I could do that. And personally, professionally, I'm also able to hear people at work now and listen to what they want me to do. So there's all sorts of things that come over time and it's been four months already and I'm like really happy to be here. I'll pass that to you, Ed. Okay, great. Did Yancy go or did I just miss that? Oh, it's Yancy there as well, sorry. Mm -hmm. And Rob. Yancy. I think we've got Rob, Yancy, are you okay. there? I'm here, I'm here. Sorry, um, I left you there. It's okay. It's okay. I was like, okay, that's fine. No worries. <laughs> um, so what I learned is, yeah, um, sometimes people want to be heard and they want to, for you to repeat exactly what they're saying, just because right. you know, sometimes you have to let it off your chest. So you can say, I t have a tendency to add a little bit more. So I, I during the session, I kind of like, okay, let me, I, I realized I have to refrain from that. Um, sometimes people just want to get hurt and not for you to give feedback. So I kind of had to step away. So I think that's something I'm going to also do within my personal life. And I, can't yeah. I hear you there as well. Great, thanks. And everybody else went, is that right? Or somebody? Rob went? Yeah, I think. Okay, all right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. So in terms of the empathy circle, it's, it's, we're doing active listening, you know, mutual active listening. And so it's a very foundational skill that uh, if you do any sort of counseling therapy, uh, you'll find that empathic listening, active listening is like the core of the whole counseling, uh, you know, uh, community. And uh, also for conflict mediation, if you're doing any sort of conflict mediation, you'll see that this foundational skill of empathic listening is like the core to conflict uh, mediation of getting the parties to really hear each other. Because a lot of the conflict is just people haven't, don't really hear each other, you know? So yeah, this is kind of like really practicing that skill. It's not everything, but it's like a really foundational first step uh, practice. And we just see it over and over again. Like Kat was saying, I do it with my family. We have 
Republicans and Democrats in the family, you know, using the empathy circle to, for different parties to hear each other around personal issues, uh, et cetera. So next steps, we're right there at the time. There's a, a form, a feedback form. If you can click on that link, if you're able to uh, click on that link, that should bring up a, a web page of our feedback for this uh, introduction. And if you uh, scroll down, you'll see you can type in your email, just type in your email. And some there's some questions uh, uh, about, you know, feedback about this uh, about this introduction if you're interested in continuing so it just gets us uh, to know a little bit about you and we can uh, send you updates and information about uh, next steps and there's links there to the course website uh, to the upcoming empathy cafe so it's a good uh, next step as somebody was asking <laughs> what do we do next it's like next step is take part in a couple more empathy circles as well as uh, you know, sign up to take part in uh, the training. And uh, there's a link to the training there. And again, you can see the cohorts. And with that, uh, anything final, Bill? Do you wanna have any final comments before we- No, close? just to express my appreciation for everybody who's so interested in this subject and is trying to make the world a more empathic place, whether you use this particular method or not. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks, Bill. And. Uh, this is a final step. Uh, if you can uh, share one feeling you have in this in the chat, you know, how are you feeling right now? Excited, uh, intense. <laughs> Any more feelings? Grateful. And had to. Homework, dreadful. <laughs> oh, gratitude. So well, with that, we'd like to just end with uh, some jazz hands and say goodbye for now and look forward to you taking part again in the future as well. And then the, if the facilitators would stay for a little debrief afterwards. Thanks. So see you next time. Bye. Hey guys. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye from Melbourne. Bye. 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 Australia. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. So late. Bye, Rob. Thank you. Bye, Rob. Really? Bye, Julian. Bye. Thank really? you, Kevin. Bye, Julian. Bye, bye. 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 Bye, Julian. Good being in a circle with you. Okay, me.